Welcome to the official Titans podcast presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Don't get sacked by the high cost of health care. Make Farm Bureau Health Plans your first line of protection. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. We're glad you're with us for the OTP. Amy Wells is here as usual. Hey, Mike. How's it going? It is great. And we are so thrilled to have a special guest with us, Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill. Welcome to the OTP. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. And we're also excited to have Titans season ticket members with us. A live audience again for the OTP. It seems to be a common theme in this offseason. Many of you have submitted your questions for Ryan beforehand. I got a whole list of them right here. But you can submit your questions while the OTP goes on. Amy Wells, tell them how they can do it. Use hashtag OTPQ, hashtag OTPQ. I'll see your questions and I will ask Ryan Tannehill. All right, good stuff. Ryan, how are the virtual workouts going so far for you and the Tennessee Titans? They've been good. You know, obviously coming in, didn't really know what to expect, how things were going to go. Just had some discussions with Arthur beforehand, like, you know, just kind of trying to figure out how this thing was going to go and, and, best way to go about it. And uh, I feel like guys have been really engaged and done a great job of, of getting the most we can out of these meetings. You know, it's honestly, it's not a whole lot different than being in a meeting room together. You know, we're communicating, guys are speaking up, questions are being asked, and uh, just really trying to grow together and grow on the same page. You know, we're making some changes on, on some things that different than we did last year. And, uh, and guys are really on top of it. You know, we will change things up. We have uh, quizzes that we'll play you know, a couple times a week. Arthur will get on the whiteboard. We have video. We have PowerPoint. I mean, we kind of have all the tools that, that we would need in a normal meeting room. And uh, we switch things up where it's, it's fresh. Um, and, and you're not just sitting there staring at, at the same screen the whole time. And, you know, I've really been proud of the guys and the way that they've engaged it and really embraced it because this is the situation that we're in. We didn't, we didn't really want to be in this situation. But, you know, sometimes in life, you know, you have adversity come your way. And it's not about – the adversity hits you, it's about what you do with it um, once it's here. So really proud of our guys and the way we're handling it so far. How much are you able to build chemistry and camaraderie with your teammates, even though you're not able to physically be on the field, you're still able to start to dig into the mental aspect of this game a little bit, right? Yeah, of course. You know, obviously it's, that's what I miss most about not being together is the locker room and, and just being around each other, having fun together, you know, building that, building that team, building the camaraderie like you said, but yeah, we're still able to, we have some downtime on there. We'll, uh, we'll chat and give each other a hard time and kind of rib on each other a little bit. So we're building that. And then, you know, like I said, virtually we're, we're detailing things up, you know, to a level that we never got to last year and then get on more on the same page and um, just hearing the receivers, you know, talk back on our, our you know, re regurgitate back basically what we went over the day before or, or questions that are thrown at them. Uh, it's been really cool to just to see how those guys are growing and, and we're all just, you know, getting more and more on the same page. Now, here's an X factor for you that you normally don't have to deal with. You have small kids who are in the same house as you while you're trying to learn a football playbook. How does their presence impact your ability to really focus in on what you need to be doing? Yeah, it can be tough. You know, um, thankfully, our, our meeting time kind of overlaps with their nap time a little bit. So... Um, you know, I kind of lock myself in a guest bedroom and, uh, and really separate myself from them. My wife does a great job of, of kind of keeping them away. There's been a few times whenever, you know, there's an escapee kid and they come, uh, come barging in or, or uh, trying to distract me from the outside. But it's, it's all good. You know, I think that's the one thing that the guys have, have done a really good job from in general is uh, being able to, uh, to focus in and, and kind of eliminate the outside distractions where, and how we're handling it where you're not getting all types of, of outside noise and background noise and things like that. So it's really been professional and we're getting a lot of. You mentioned in an interview that you've been throwing some with Titans tight end, Johnu Smith. How has that been going? Oh, it's been great. You know, I, I'm thankful to have Johnu down here with me in South Florida. Like I said, wish I was with, with all the guys up, up getting ready for some OTAs, but having Johnu down here, you know, we've been working for, for I don't know, a couple months now, you know, just, uh, just throwing, just seeing him, and having a familiar face, a familiar uh, body, and, and getting more on the same page with John has been really good. You know, I think he's a 
he's a dynamic weapon. He showed it last year. I think his his progression as the year went on and just his athleticism really got to got to shine as the year went on and, and look forward for uh, for more of that this year. All right, so we're going to get to questions from Titans fans and from season ticket members who are with us live. If you want to tweet a question in for Ryan Tannehill, do it right now. Hashtag OTPQ. But I've got one question I've been dying to ask you because, you know, we played against you numerous times and you always played well against us, unfortunately. Knowing your story back at Texas A&M that you didn't win the quarterback job initially and you, you moved to wide receiver and had success at the position, but the story is you didn't really play wide receiver full-time. You were still in the quarterback meetings. I've just always been dying to ask you, how did that work? Yeah, so going in, I registered in my first year at a and My registered freshman year, we had a guy named Steve McGee. He was going into his, his senior year. He had been starting for like three and a half years. So I was going to be a backup, and, you know, we weren't – really deep at the, at the receiver position at that time. And, and coach Sherman, Mike Sherman came over to me. He's like, Hey, you know, um, would you be interested in playing receiver? I said, well, I'm a quarterback and I want to play quarterback, but if you'll allow me to, to stay in quarterback meetings and, and at the end of the day, I want to play quarterback. So prepare to play quarterback, you know, I'll, I'll play receiver as well. So, you know, a couple of days later, I think my first day I caught a, a couple of touchdowns in practice. And I think three days later, I was a, one of our starting wide receivers. So it was a crazy, <laughs> fast transition and kind of got stuck out there uh, for a few years. But, but the whole time was my eyes were on the end goal of, of playing quarterback and being in a position that I really wanted to be in. So yeah, I stayed in QB meetings and individual drills in practice the whole time I was doing quarterback things. I wasn't uh, ever doing receiver drills in practice. And then, uh, you know, finally got my opportunity my, my junior year and, you know, try not to look back. So Mike got to ask you about college. So I want to ask you about your rookie year with the Dolphins because there was a tiny little show being filmed called Hard Knocks. And you found yourself as a rookie being one of the main characters featured in this show. What was that experience like for you? Just trying to get your feet on the ground in the NFL. And oh, by the way, this huge HBO show is happening. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, honestly, I was just trying to keep my head above water at the time, uh, trying to learn as much as I could and, and grow as much as I could. Uh, obviously had a, had a lot to learn and, and still do, but yeah, I, I didn't know a whole lot at the time and, and I was just trying to do my best each and every day to, to go out and play the best football I could. And yeah, like you said, on top of that was, was a show. So there's some funny moments from that show. I think one of the one people probably remember is I didn't know the divisions and who was in divisions. Uh, or Matt Moore had asked me, I think, you know, who's in our division? I knew that one, but I didn't know anything past that. And uh, I think that was probably uh, a moment where I realized, well, crap, I got some more to learn, you know, at least figure out these divisions. But, yeah, it was, it was a fun time. You know, I think looking back at it, I haven't gone back and watched it, but looking back at it, I probably wish I would have had a little more fun with it. You know, I felt like it was more of an annoyance at the time, just that there was cameras always around, uh, always – having microphones in the in the meeting rooms and always around. So you never felt like that uh, you could really just, you know, be yourself and and then I think that, that people were watching. Probably overthought a little too much at the time, but, you know, it was, uh, it was a learning experience and uh, there's some funny moments for sure. How long had you been married when that happened, when Hard Knocks happened? So I had got married in January after my senior season before the draft. So – Played in the bowl game, whatever date that was, you know, end of December, early January. I fly down to Florida to IMG at uh, in Bradenton, and I'm going to get like, I think like three or four days of training in before I fly to my wedding. We got married destination in Mexico. So I was going to get like a, a three or four days of training in, fly to Mexico for three days, have a destination wedding, then fly back and start training again. And I was planning on playing in the senior bowl. Well, in the process, like my second day of throwing, I break my foot, rolling out, just doing QB drills, nothing crazy. I, I'm rolling out to my left. I turn my shoulders and, bah, you know, it's my fifth metatarsal breaks in my foot. So here I'm, you know, I'm freaking out. Call my wife, like, hey, just broke my foot. You know, I don't know what's going to happen now, but we got to figure this out. So end up going back to, uh, to College Station, see a doctor there. He's like, yeah, you definitely need surgery. So schedule my surgery for the day after my wedding, 
So I fly to Mexico with a broken foot on crutches, get married uh, in Mexico. You know, I'm like trying to limp down the aisle, no crutches, you know, on a broken foot. Um, my wife's pushing me back to our room in a wheelchair, you know, after the reception. <laughs> Probably not, not what she had envisioned when she pictured her wedding night, you know, as a little girl. But, um, but yeah, so get married with a broken foot and then uh, go back, have surgery the next day and then, you know, started the rehab process. But yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a crazy couple of weeks there of, of figuring out what to have, what's going to happen and then getting married and then surgery and not how my wife probably saw the beginning of her marriage going. That's an eventful first year of marriage with, with that, between that and hard knocks and being a rookie starting quarterback in the NFL. That's amazing. Well, okay. So Amy and I've asked enough questions. Are you ready to take some questions from Titans fans? Let's do it. All right, I'm going to jump in first. Brandon from Nashville submitted this at TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Brandon wants to know, what has been the most pleasant surprise since you became a member of the Titans, Ryan? Most pleasant surprise. Man, there's been so many good things, you know, since I, I joined the organization. The team is just really, really good. You know, I think that's one thing that you never know what kind of team you're walking into, what kind of organization and – um, you know, the leadership from the top down coach variable down to the coaching staff and then uh, just a, a locker room full of great guys. You know, I think that makes the biggest difference on your day to day. You know, like, do you enjoy work? Is it, is it miserable? Do, do you like the guys you're, you're spending, you know, 12 hours with in a day? Um, and, and I do. I really love the team. I love the guys that we have. We have, we have good people who are also good football players and, and want to win. And when you kind of combine those things together, it, it's something special. So. I think that's one thing I've been really thankful for. And then on top of that, you know, Tennessee's been nice. You know, people in, in Nashville have been great. I get that Southern hospitality to it. Uh, something that I'm more familiar with from back in Texas, you know, growing up. It's got more of that Southern feel. So, you know, that's been kind of nice to get back to. Okay, we'll get to some from hashtag OTPQs live from season ticket members in a minute. I've got another good one. This is from Nashville, and I love this question. Over the course of a season, Ryan, how much evolution is there in play calling? Is there massive change from week to week depending on the team, or is it pretty consistent with minor tweaks? I think it depends what system you're in. You know, I think I've been in systems where, you know, every week is a ton of new material, a ton of new calls. Then I've been in systems where it's minor tweaks and, and you're kind of creating plays, a few plays, game plan plays or, or tweaks in, in the game plan. So it can really be on both ends of the spectrum. It depends, you know, what your system is, what your coordinator likes. But I will say that, you know, Arthur's kind of the guy who we believe in what we do and we just want to do it better and better each week. And obviously we're making changes. We still have game plan plays and things we try to take advantage of. But, you know, when you're able to really focus in on, on details and get better and better at, at the techniques you're using and kind of overlap that with, with similar plays throughout the throughout the year um you really see a lot more growth and um you know that's what we've been doing here's one from alan from jackson tennessee he says what is one area in particular that you're hoping to improve in this upcoming season being a competitor you, you go back and you look at you know where can we be better and, and there's so many areas so many details that throughout the course of the season where uh, we had opportunities that we missed you know um little things Footwork, timing, accuracy, um, just being able to anticipate getting through the progression a little faster. I think, you know, as the year went on, I felt myself doing those things better and better, just being more and more familiar with the offense and just getting the reps kind of banked up. And so, you know, going back to second year in the offense, I'm really excited to uh, kind of, you know, pick up where we left off last year and, and work on, uh, on just getting more detailed and, and better and better. Here's another one from Victor in Tennessee. He says, what is it about the Titans system that led you to have the success that you've had with this organization? A couple things, right? It's uh, the guys around me obviously are, are incredible playing, playing really good football. You know, when you're not getting sacked, you're not getting hit, it's a lot easier to play the quarterback position. You had guys on the outside getting open and making plays and obviously Derek behind me who was, who was toting the rock and leading the league and rushing. So uh, you kind of combine all those things and it, and it all works together, right? We say it all the time in the meeting room that it takes all 11, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, you know, Derek's going to get the credit in the run game, but you know, we had guys, receivers blocking 40 yards down the field, Corey, you know, hustling to get backside cutoffs, 
AJ, same thing. You know, it all works together. And the offensive line obviously is where it all starts in, in the run game or pass game. So when people look at it, you know, they kind of look at the numbers or the stats of, of the skill position players, but it really takes all 11. It all works together. And, and um, we put a lot, of, a lot of thought and a lot of intentionality into pointing out, like, little things that, that make the whole thing go, whether it's, you know, receivers blocking the run game or a uh, back picking up a blitzer in, in the pass game. You know, it's, it's crucial that we all do the little things uh, that are in our, our job requirements because it all works together and it makes the whole team better. This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it comes to your health care coverage, you should be the one to make the call. So call Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. Do we have any OTPQs yet? I do have an OTPQ. This one is from Carrie, and she asks, what game are you most looking forward to this season? Honestly, I'm just going to say Denver because that's the, I know that's where we start the schedule. That's where we <laughs> kick things off. It's a Monday night game. I don't even know who we play after that. So, you know, excited for Denver. I think, obviously, a game that, that we didn't play our best last year and got to give them credit. You know, they, uh, they beat us fair and square, but, you know, not scoring a point really leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So, uh, you know, looking forward to kicking the year off right. First game of the year. You got another one, Amy, or you want me to jump back in? Oh, I've got one more. Okay. This is Bobby B. And he asks what your favorite food or recipe is. He's running out of quarantine meal ideas. <laughs> oh man. This is probably a better question for my wife who does, 99.9% .9 of the cooking in our house, you know, I'll uh, put some food on the grill or try to help out where I can, but I'm more of like a, a dish cleaner or assistant to like, hand me this. Okay, here you go. You know what I mean? Um, but my favorite food, we've been eating a lot of fish tacos, honestly. Um, I mean, I'm still in South Florida and I try to go fishing as much as I can. So whenever we have fresh fish, I love fish tacos uh, and she, my wife does a great job. She, you know, dices up all the toppings to put on top and I usually grill the fish and uh, have, have uh, some fresh fish tacos. So there's really not a lot better than that. I'm gonna throw in this question from Matt in Rockland, California, Amy. What advice, Ryan, would you offer to someone like Andy Dalton or Cam Newton, who are likely to be in the same situation that you were in last year, going from starter to backup on a new team? Yeah, it's a tough, tough position, honestly. You know, it was a lot of hard times, a lot of hard, you know, conversations and moments, you know, that, that happen throughout that whole process. But just stay true to yourself, stay true to the, what you believe in and um, the pillars uh, that kind of make you who you are. You know, try to do the best you can with the situation that you're in. You know, whenever, you know, I was backing up, I was trying to do the best possible job I could at, at prepping the defense and uh, preparing myself to go in if called upon. As long as you do that, no, no matter really what position you're in in life, you know, whether you're in the position you want to be in or um, like you said, when I was a backup, that's not the position I wanted to be in, but as long as you do the best possible job you can with what you're given, then you have nothing to look back and regret. Good question from Matt in Rockland, California. This one's from John in Brentwood. It seems like some of the best quarterbacks are not necessarily the fastest runners or the ones with the biggest arms, but they seem to have the skills to quickly analyze defenses, which leads to great anticipation and decision-making. What do quarterbacks do during the off season to help them develop and enhance those mental skills? Yeah, I think obviously quick decision making is is huge. You know, I think sometimes you don't even realize how many decisions you're making at the line of scrimmage with, you know, cans and checks and audibles you have at the line of scrimmage, along with you know your post snap snuff of, of where the ball's going to go. But I think watching tape is is where it all starts. You know, mentally going through plays. Okay, this is the play call turn on the tape, okay, this is the defense, this is what I anticipate happening, whether it's plays that, that we had last year um, or, you know, you're watching another team and, and uh, you know, it's watching a defense and, and what you kind of see out of the defense. So the tape actually allows you to kind of mentally place yourself in the situation and, and go through it mentally, even if you're not, you know, with the, with the team. Owen has a question. He's asking from Knoxville. He asks, what was your favorite play last year? Oh, my gosh, my favorite play. <laughs> We had so many cool plays, you know. Man, probably probably one of my favorites was uh, the long touchdown to AJ in Oakland. Play that, that we kind of talked about earlier in the week. Made a slight adjustment on it and uh, ended up coming up big. You know, AJ ran a, ran a great route. 
and made a huge play. Man, there's so many cool plays. You, you think back to the year, and um, it's really hard to, to pick one, but I think that's probably one of the longest touchdowns I've had in my career, so uh, I'll say that one. I think that play was so great from our standpoint as fans watching it because it was obvious to stand there and throw that ball in that situation. You were going to get it. The man's coming down the middle. You're going to get hit. You know you've got to step into that throw, and yet you did it, made a great throw to A.J., and it's a 91-yard touchdown. Is that the hardest part of the job, knowing when you're going to get it, you're going to get hit like that, and still finishing the execution? You know, honestly, I I don't mind that as much. You know, what what sucks is whenever you know you're going to get hit and you got nowhere to throw it. That's the (laughs) (laughs) If you got a guy open, then yeah, I'll stand in there all day and, and let it rip. You know, it's it's kind of the price of doing business. But yeah, the harder part is when you got nowhere to throw it and you got to take it to the chin. All right, we have any live ones from Titan season ticket members should hashtag OTPQ via Twitter. No, Mike Keith, everyone is carefully crafting their tweets. All right, so I'm going to do one from Josh in Brooklyn then. Where did that slick finger roll come from when you run it in for a touchdown? We love it. I don't know. It just kind of came came to me as I was running the end zone. I hadn't thought about it beforehand. hadn't talked about it or anything. Just kind of ran in the end zone and, and wanted to put a little flair on it. And I liked it. Got a lot of good feedback, so kept it rolling. Look for it again this year. I'll keep it going. Yeah, the finger roll is always in style. Always. Sure. It's a classic move. I've got a question from John in Tom's River, New Jersey. He said, did starting last year as the backup quarterback help you build a rapport with receivers like A.J. Brown, who was also kind of running with the twos throughout the season? You know, I got to work with some of those guys that uh, ended up playing big for us. Khalif Raymond would be another guy who spent a lot of time with in the offseason and in training camp. Darius Jennings, another guy that, you know, wasn't with the first group a whole lot, but ended up playing and making some big plays for us, you know, throughout the year. So our receiver group was so deep last year, and and that was was really a blessing for us. And um, I think that time playing with those guys and and getting a lot of reps with them banked up, you know, throughout the offseason, throughout training camp was uh, was huge for me. This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. My next question comes from Troy in Livingston. He says, after you took over last year, the whole team seemed to come together. As a fan, the biggest difference we noticed is that you were all having fun. Do you think that was as big a factor in the team's success last season as anything else? Yeah, I know when you're playing as a team and you're enjoying what you're doing, that uh, there's that synergistic you know, compounding that happens. You, you start to play, play better than than any one guy's playing and when you're playing together as a team. you know, I think that uh, winning is fun. And when you're having, having fun, that means you're usually winning games. So, um, you know, the more you can do that, obviously, the better situation you're going to be in. All right. I've got one here from hashtag OTPQ. And this is Rob. He asks, how does getting Adam Humphreys back healthy next year impact the potential of the passing offense? Adam's so good. You know, he obviously does a great job for us, primarily in the slot. He, he's been doing it several years now. So he has a, has a great feel for – you know, working the inside, working between the numbers, just going back and watching tape that we've been watching, you know, through training camp and, and even um, throughout the season last year. So many big plays where his savviness really helped him get open and helped him make the plays. So, yeah, having a veteran guy like Adam who has a great feel for working between the numbers really opens up, you know, a lot of things for us. And obviously huge on third down. He made a couple – even in uh, Kansas City, he's working on a, on a, on a bummed-up ankle, but still um, – still was able to, you know, make a, make a couple big third down plays for us. So, you know, getting him back healthy is going to be huge. Here's a question from Matt in Atoka, Tennessee. Where do you believe the Titans offense can improve the most in 2020? You know, one of our, our keys this year is just being more efficient, you know, in everything we do, whether it's a single route or, um, you know, where the ball goes in a concept, you know, being more efficient, getting the most we can out of each and every play. And with that comes consistency. You know, the the more you can be consistent with every position that's on the field, you know, the better you're going to be. Caleb from Florence, Alabama. What's the biggest difference between playing in Nashville and playing in Miami? Practice is a little colder in Nashville. I'll say that, which I kind of liked. I really enjoyed, you know, getting some seasons, right? And in Miami, it's, it's beautiful and Obviously, it's it's awesome, but it's it's hot pretty much year round. You know, you don't get any any seasonal changes 
you know, Christmas is 85 degrees, which is kind of cool. But then after a couple of years, you're like, man, I wish I, you know, had, had a, had a cold Christmas. So, you know, that's one thing, just, just cold practices was, was a little different um, as far as being in Miami and just a totally different city, it's different vibes. And um, I think both cities are great, but you know, I've enjoyed being in Tennessee. Here's a question from hashtag OTPQ. Alan would like to know what was going through your mind when you were midair during your rushing touchdown against Jacksonville. If I'm thinking of the right play is when I, I kind of ran and got hit in the back, jumped over a guy and scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I was in the air, I, I knew I was scoring, but I was probably thinking this is about to hurt as I hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you're all in, you're all in, and then you're up in the air. You reach that moment where, all right, I'm scoring. And you look down, you're like, yeah, this is going to hurt. Um, <laughs> And it did, yeah, it knocked the wind out of me, and uh, it hurt pretty bad. But you know, you got to get up and act like it doesn't hurt in that situation. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Caden in Lebanon wants to know what is the best way for me as a fan to learn what defense the other team is playing. Oh, great question. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know where to tell you to start there. I don't know if there's like outside resources or like a football one on one. Generally, if you look at the safeties, that'll that'll give you. A starting point, you know, if, uh, if it's a one high or two high defense, that's a, that's always a good starting point. But yeah, maybe you guys can, if you have any materials, you can pitch in on that question. I'm not quite sure. We have somebody, Dave McGinnis on Titans Radio, the former Cardinals head coach who was a coach in the league yeah. for 30 years. He will be able to help us. All right, <laughs> just a couple more before Ryan has to leave us. Alex from Nolansville, and, and having a youngster, I think he'll appreciate this, my three-year-old daughter, Charlotte, would like to know who your favorite superhero is. She is a big fan, so help Charlotte out here. All right, Charlotte, great question. Favorite superhero? Oh, honestly, I love the Avengers movies, so uh, probably somebody from the Avengers movies. Captain America is always a good one. I mean, how can you go wrong? That's my favorite. How can you go wrong? Stand-up yep. guy, always fighting crime. Got a little mean streak in him, but he, it's always for the right reasons. Seems like it fits. Good outfit, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, so do you have any more, Amy, or do you want me to finish? Uh, no, I think you should wrap it up, Mike. All right, so this one comes from Kingsville, Texas. You know Kingsville? Way down south. I mean, that's uh, if I'm thinking of the right spot, that's basically on the border between Texas and Mexico, way down south. My son and I are big-time Titans fans, and we love that you're back on the team. We are upset that analysts think the team will regress this year. What workouts have you been doing to prove these people wrong? <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm grinding every day. You know, it's, uh, it's um, a different situation because we're not together, but, you know, we're all, we're all grinding and working separately physically, right? So we we're all working out, running, conditioning, you know, getting together. Uh, I think Logan is uh, is up in Nashville throwing with some of the guys. I'm down here throwing with Johnu. It's a different situation, but you know the grind hasn't stopped. The work hasn't stopped. Uh, we have to be a little bit more intentional with how we do it, but uh, we're still getting ourselves ready. Um, excited about the opportunity that's in front of us. The fact that you're on the official Titans podcast means that you are literally talking to Titans fans around the world, and season ticket members were able to join us for this program live. When you re-signed with the team, the response was so overwhelmingly positive. People were so excited. I would think that just probably fed into, you know, 10 months of really good things that had happened for you and your family, both personally and professionally, with the way you've been received and the fit that this seems to be all the way around. Yeah, we were really excited to come back. You know, I, I think I, I mentioned several times as the year kind of wrapped up where, you know, I really liked – uh, the organization, I like the, love the guys on the team and, and really wanted to be back if we could work it out. And you know, I'm so thankful that, that things worked out and I'm able to come back. I'm uh, excited about the opportunity that's in front of us and, and being able to go, you know, take another crack at this thing. Obviously got really close to, to our end goal last year, but I uh, feel like we left a lot on the table and really excited to, to go, you know, fine tune things even more and, and uh, you know, come back swinging again this year. Thank you so much for taking time with us and, and for the Titans fans via the official Titans podcast. Very kind of you, Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is fun. Good job, Amy Wells. Good job, Mike Keith. The official Titans podcast presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. For Ryan Tannehill and Amy Wells, Mike Keith, thanks you for being with us for the O. 
TP. Peace.